Welcome to another episode of the Cantina of Comics. Today we're going to show you a drink that will come in handy when you are co-piloting the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> and it all begins War of the Bounty Hunters. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Cantina of Comics. I'm Matt. And I'm Christy. And today we're going to show you how to make the Wookiee Woo! Woo! -woo! <laughs> or how would, uh... <laughs> <laughs> the Wookiee Woo! <laughs> Alright, All right. so what do we need to make so, a Wookiee Woo! Woo! First we're going to put some ice in our glasses. Okay, that seems pretty easy to this do. I think easiest. I could even do you that. You probably could do that. <laughs> Although sometimes you have a little bit of a hard time maneuvering the little picker uppers. So I know. I it's I because they put little you. rubber grips on them and it's like... That should, be, that should make it easier. Well, the problem is you can only get one ice cube at a time. All right. Okay. All right. So now we need a an ounce of vodka and we're using whipped cream. Whooped cream. Whipped. Whipped cream. So just one shot glass full one of the full. vodka yep. per glass. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then things are getting oh, a little peachy. This one's mine because I put more than that. Oh, that one's yours. Ooh. We know how you don't care for mm. alcohol that much, so we'll just put that one there. Okay. This is peach schnapps. And how much do we put of the a peach half an schnapps? Ooh. Got a sweet cream on my finger. There, one. So just a half. Uh huh. Okay. And then four ounces of the cranberry juice so i would not measure it we don't it have out. a four ounce shot glass do no. we that could hang in a lot of people in trouble <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so probably just to like where it starts to get smaller okay say when Stop. oh that doesn't seem like a whole lot that doesn't seem like four ounces okay you can do more because you know you'll want more i want to thin it out a little okay. bit okay but and not then. as much for yours I'll tell you when. Okay, how's that? Okay, that's good. No. That's good. <laughs> Just a little we bit more. We want to make sure it tastes like the Wookiee Woo Woo. Okay. okay. So that looks good to you? Mm hmm All right, and so then... just three ingredients, basically. Your vodka, your schnapps, 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 and your cranberry juice. And then a lime wedge to fall off the side. Lime wedge. Because basically wedgie? that's what it's going to do. Okay, so I'm going to try. So you're going to do Get fancy. Oops, Bloop. there it goes. <laughs> Timber. Okay. Okay, so ready? three ingredients, very simple to make. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's a like a refreshing summertime drink. Right. Perfect almost... for the 4th of July. Oh. And it's red. red. And it's red. And you, well, it's red and green. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you got one of the three colors. Yeah. Okay, right, so this go. is a Wookie Woo Woo. Ready? You ready? Clink. That is good. Mm, I like that's that. That's good. Yeah. And now, do Peach you like and yours? Mm -hmm. I like yeah. mine with a lot of the cranberry yes. because sometimes the vodka can get a little overpowering. Well, and actually, the peach schnapps is pretty power powerful power, too. So, yeah, that's good. I think that's a good balance. I think mm -hmm. mine has a good balance of the, of the cranberry and then mixing of the of the alcohol. Yeah. Well, that is very nice. That's yeah. a wookie woo woo, perfect for your Independence Day weekend. That's exactly right. All right. Well, coming up, we're gonna talk War of the Bounty Hunters next. Welcome back to the Cantina of Comics. Today we're talking about one comic, a big comic. This is War of the Bounty Hunters Alpha Precious Cargo. This issue is written by Charles Soule with pencils by Steve McNiven and colors by Laura Martin. The big summer Star Wars crossover event from Marvel has arrived. This story starts with this issue right here and runs through Star Wars, Darth Vader, Dr. Aphra, and Bounty Hunters. 
War of the Bounty Hunters Alpha begins with Boba Fett transporting the carbonized carcass, he's still alive, of Han Solo to Jabba the Hutt. But of course, nothing is ever simple as the carbonite matrix Han is frozen in is unstable. So Boba Fett makes a pit stop on Nar Shadda to visit a Besalisk doctor named Ragon. Boba Fett doesn't happen to have the credits necessary to pay the good doctor to stabilize Han Solo, so he heads out to the fights on Nar Shadda to take out the current champion, Weirman Lictor, who is a giant spider creature? Fett moves up the rankings until he is face to face with the current champion. Of course, Boba Fett wins and heads back to the Doctor only to find that someone or someones has taken the Carbonite block containing Solo. And now here are my quick takes on War of the Bounty Hunters Alpha. We get to see all sorts of familiar creatures like Doc Ragan who's a Besselisk like Dex from Dex's Diner in Episode 2. Well, what do you know? We also get to see a Yarkoral like Selt Marie, you know, aka Yak Face, a Paloic like Sai Snoodles, a Duros, well, just his head, and even a Kowakian monkey lizard. Boba Fett has to change his identity to enter the fights, and boy, do I need that Black Series figures right now, thank you very much. The art by McNiven depicting the final boss battle is just about perfect, very action heavy without getting lost in the back and forth. But what about Kanji Club? We get to see Fett interact with them too. And all hail the Beskar Brawler. Now, what did you think of War of the Bounty Hunters Alpha? You can go to utd.com slash discord and let us know what you think. And don't forget, every Wednesday, it's the Cosmic Force talking all things comics in the Star Wars universe. And welcome back to the Cantina of Comics. Wasn't that War of the Bounty Hunters issue crazy. awesome? It was crazy. It was insane. It was, it was yeah, insane. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just made a Wookiee woo woo, and uh, we were fortunate enough to meet some Wookiees in real some life. Wookies, yeah, you can tell your story. <laughs> I'll tell my story first. Um, this was at one of the you know various comic cons, and I got to meet Peter Mayhew. Uh, it was pretty pretty special. Of course, Chewbacca is one of those type of characters in the Star Wars universe that pretty much everybody loves. Right. You know, he's the faithful companion. Um, I mean, that scene in uh, Rise of Skywalker where they tell him that Princess Leia has passed away, mm -hmm. spoiler alert, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and he just, you know, takes it all, you know, he, he, you know, in uh, the, uh, uh, yeah. I'm trying to yeah. think of that yeah. one movie, it was episode Go seven, mm -hmm. <laughs> The yeah. Force Awakens, there it is, uh, where um, he comes and gives Princess Leia a big hug, yeah. and, you know, walking carpet and all that, so there's a special connection there, but a, a lot of people love the character, and of course that was brought to light life by Peter Mayhew, mm -hmm. who just really did a great job interpreting Chewbacca, and then he really, you know, he really ha held the banner high for Chewbacca. He was a great ambassador for all Wookiees all over the place and for the Star Wars brand. Would you say and so, he was an ambassador of Kashyyyk? What? My wife with the Kashyyyk reference? Ba-boom! Microphone, mm -hmm. drop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice, okay. So then a couple years ago, we also got to meet Eunice Swartimo. Swatimo? Swatimo. Swatimo. And, um, who who kind of took over in Force Awakens? You know, he did all the like the physical stuff, um, the scenes where like Chewbacca was sitting down with Peter Mayhew. But then he took over the role completely, 100% in the Last Jedi and then the Rise of Skywalker. Right. Because Peter's health was kind of declining. Yeah, so, his yeah. well, he when uh, when we met him, when we met Peter Mayhew, he had just undergone double knee surgery. Oh, that's right. To knee yeah. replacement surgery, and but his health was on the decline, and then he passed away. Mm -hmm which was unfortunate, but Eunice really took up the mantle. Yeah, so Eunice was uh, quite the character. Um, yeah, he was quite the we character, he's a funny guy. Um, in one of his panels, and he was saying that, I believe he was um, actually selling insurance at the time, but also like teaching playing, basketball or playing basketball. Playing for the national... Uh, um, Finland, Finnish basketball, basketball team. team. Cause you know, he's like eight foot 20, so. Uh -huh, yeah. So they um, they got a call that they were looking for a um, seven foot tall, blonde haired, blue eyed basketball player for a movie in Hollywood, and yeah. that was. Hmm. I wonder what role that, that could was be for. The guys, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's how he got 
involved. But so actually, I put together a little bit of Wookie trivia. Whoa! Yeah. Wookie trivia. So I'm gonna see if I can oh, stump you. Please have, please have something on Life Day on there. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, how did George Lucas come up with Chewbacca? Uh, because of his uh, his pet dog, he basically based it on his dog. Okay. We named the dog Indiana. Right after. <laughs> After Indiana Jones. Well, actually, Indiana Jones, um, yeah, that's where he came up with the idea right. for the name. But but also because the dog um, was a co-pilot often in the he passenger would sit in the, seat in the, of in the, the car, car so, as George yeah. would drive around town. Good job, yeah. good job, okay. Matt, good job. Thank you, I got one. Bing! <laughs> what nationality is the name Chewbacca? What nationality? Mm -hmm. Oh, like Earth nationality? Mm -hmm. um, Tunisian? Nope. Nope. Russian. Oh, Russian, okay. From Sobaka, meaning dog. Oh, okay. And the term Wookiee came from a voice actor by the name of Terry McGovern doing a voiceover, doing voiceover tracks for Lucas's directorial debut, THX 1138. Okay. He huh. improvised a line and said, I think we just ran over a Wookiee. So that's how the... the I think don't run over a Wookiee. <laughs> I mean, your car would just... Oh. How old was okay. Chewbacca in Star Wars A New Hope? Star Wars A New Hope. Okay. He was... 392. No, 200. No. Oh, 200. Okay, <laughs> I was off by 100 years. Does Chewie have a family? Yes, he does. Um, Marta? Nope. No. No. Uh, his wife is starts with an M, though. It does. Okay. Martha. <laughs> and then there's Itchy, who was dad. the dad, mm -hmm. the grandpa, and then Scrubs, his kid. No, but close. Um, so they introduced um, his family on the infamous Star Wars oh, holiday man. special. So bad. His wife's name was Malatabuk. Malatabuk? Okay. Or and Mally. And his son's name was Lumpawaro. Or also Lumpy. Known as Lumpy. Oh, okay. Yeah. The special also marks the first appearance of your ever-loving... Boba Fett. That's right. Yeah. Lucas hated the show so much that he limited its availability following its original air oh. date on 11 he, It aired one time mm -hmm. on, I believe it was CBS, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, he, I mean, they used like some unused footage from episode four, and it was just trying to squeeze in. I mean, you know, Star Wars was the most popular thing. Uh, after it premiered in theaters in 1977 and when they did the holiday special in 1978 it was just trying to capitalize on the stars but there was so much not un star wars stuff that was involved <laughs> that it wasn't uh, it's it's a tough watch and it's two hours long whoa um yeah and so they had to fill it with uh, harvey corman does an alien food segment and <laughs> b arthur runs a cantina and That's sings a song funny. Um, Art Carney is in it. He does an okay job, but uh, but yeah, lumpy and itchy. Um, mm, yeah. Itchy itchy has some uh, issues with some hologram VR material. So. <laughs> hmm. Okay. One last fun fact. Okay. Fun fact. Wookies have always got your back. Yes. They put honor and friendship above all other vultures. Vir virtues. Virtues. Nice. I would I would believe that. Um, that's I you know like you said they have a lot of basically they're bipedal furry dogs. They are uh, yep. in the Star Wars universe, mm -hmm. and so that's I think that's one of the reasons why everybody loves Chewbacca is because he's that faithful companion, that yeah. faithful friend. Yeah. Uh, here's another fun fact. Okay. Did you know that in Return of the Jedi, it really was supposed to be the planet Kashyyyk, where all the Wookiees mm -hmm. live. Yeah. That was supposed to be the ba battle, but instead they they already determined that Wookiees can fly spaceships and can communicate, so they had to make little furry teddy bears called Ewoks. Yeah. Ewoks. <laughs> yeah so all right. Well, there's all you need to know about the Wookiee and the Wookiee mm -hmm. Woo Woo. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate okay. you watching this episode, and if you have an idea for maybe a drink you'd like us to make, uh, just leave us a you know message in the comments down there and let us know and. Yeah, maybe we'll make it on a future episode. Yes, that's fun. And we'd appreciate it if you would uh, give us a thumbs up, if you'd subscribe to the Utini YouTube channel, and if you would click the notification button, uh, that big old bell to let you know when Utini posts a new video. So, on behalf of Christy and myself, thank you for watching, and remember keep on reading and keep on drinking. Thud, thud, thud. My best Wookiee. <laughs> <laughs> that is delightful.